you want somebody stupid calling you to make you forget everything that God has done. They stupid, and you stupid if you forget it all. That's what the devil wants. Everything God did, he left landmarks and monuments because he wanted the people to remember what he did for them. Don't you forget what, look at somebody and say, don't forget where you came from. Get lifted up in yourself like you something now. And you totally forget when you was a wretch undone. That sounds like that's the worst thing you can be. Not just a wretch. You ain't finished being a wretch. You got more wretch to do. More wretchedness. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash when the devil hurts you rejoice look at somebody say when the devil hurts you rejoice re we on this when the devil hurts you series amen when the devil hurts you rejoice amen how many of you in the army of the lord remember that song i'm a soldier I'm a soldier. Hey, Elder Kid is Boondini. Y'all remember him for Ali? That's in the corner. Rumble, young man, rumble. You got it down and do it. <laughs> oh, you got to have somebody in your corner like that, boy. He'll have you up for acting a fool. <laughs> oh, but I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. When we enlisted in the army of the Lord, we knew there would be challenges. Amen. You knew when you came to Christ, the first challenge was you. <laughs> Amen. Because the spirit of Akrite had to take. And it, amen. And it was like putting a curl over a perm. Y'all remember that? You gotta let it grow all the way out. You gotta let it grow all the way out and clip the roots. Because if there's any perm, any perm in the vicinity, the curl is not gonna take. I don't care which kid it is. Dark and lovely, Jerry, whatever the kid is, it's not gonna conquer a permanent that's because it's in the name of what it is ain't it permanent do you know what permanent means see we got so used to saying perm we didn't know what we were saying we was really saying permanent that means some is in your scalp in your blood system on your fallopian tubes can I be honest in here it's all down in your reproductive cavities. Because it's permanent. Yeah, you didn't know that. Boy, I preach a whole nother message about that. Amen. That's what you, amen. You better go natural. Look at that. Brother, you in a black church. <laughs> Room just got tight. Walls are enclosing. Amen. But that stuff with boy to mess with you, give you fibroids and tumors and all that stuff. All them chemicals. It, it's permanent. Amen. Quit frying your head. Amen. Let me leave that, leave that alone. Amen. For we have an all white church next week. <laughs> okay. His sayings are too hard. The pastor's sayings are hard. They are hard. And my hair is hard. If I follow the hard sins, I'll have hard hair. <laughs> but when we enlist in the, <laughs> in the army of the Lord, we knew there would be challenges. The first challenge is us. And then the next challenge is the devil messing with us. Because we decided to go God's way. When you go God's way, not only are you going against the grain of most of your families and different things, but you're going against the grain of society. So there's going to be challenges. 
2 Timothy 3 and 12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall what? Suffer. Suffer. You're going to have to fight to be right. The enemy doesn't truly become your enemy until you follow Christ. Until you follow Christ, you and the devil on the same team. But once you follow Christ, the enemy becomes your enemy. Then he opposes us. John 15 and 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. So it's the devil. The devil isn't really just hating you. He hates the God or the Christ in you. Amen. When you accept him, he hates all creation. Even the folks that's with him, he hates them. You see how he does them, right? He give them fame, fortune, all of that, and then kill them. Yeah, so he hates everybody, but he especially hates us because Christ is in us, and that is his enemy. Amen? Amen. And God lets the devil be the devil for a reason. Amen. Do you know how you would act if nothing went wrong? Something has to go wrong sometimes to get you to pray right. You know, if you go to praying right before it go wrong, then sometimes it won't even go wrong. But because you were so caught up in what was going good, you ignored what was messing up. And God has to use that to get you back to him. Amen. And we're human. So when things are going good, sometimes we let them go a little too good. That's human nature. Yeah, but you just begin to graduate to more and more things. Worse things. When we get out of the presence of God, we get out of the habit of reading his word. We get out of the habit of praying. We get too comfortable with the Lord. Amen. People came up during that altar, altar prayer and everybody you know, was coming up when I was talking and whatever. And they were responding to it or whatever. But when that demon manifested and went to talking... And arguing with itself and all that. I looked up and it was a whole lot more folks on the altar. Folks got comfortable. They weren't expecting the devil to show up. Yeah. But this is warfare. Amen. This is warfare. That's why we pray Wednesday. Because I knew the devil was going to show up. Because he used to do that all the time when I used to do the message back in the day. Amen. Amen. You have to care about a person for them to deeply wound you. Did you know that? So a person you don't care about can't deeply wound you. They can upset you, but they can't deeply wound you. So what does the devil do? He gets in somebody that you really care about to deeply wound you. Because when we're wounded, we're vulnerable. Yeah, because when you're really, really wounded, you can't think about anything but your wound. Yeah, if you got a gash in the side of your neck, you can't think about your feet. You're not worried about walking. You're worried about the gash. When you're wounded, it takes all of your focus and your attention. That's why the devil wants to hurt you, because if he can hurt you, You'll think about yourself only. Then you'll make a bad decision. You'll start throwing stuff out of the window that you shouldn't throw out of the window because you feel that way about yourself. That's what wounds do. That's why each one of us in here, the devil has tried to wound us in a way to make us give up on what we truly believe. Because a wound takes all of the focus. It does that biologically. You wound yourself, your brain just forgets everything and goes to that to try to fix that situation to keep you alive. And that's what we do spiritually. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. So when you're hurt, you just forget everything and focus on your own hurt. Especially when it's somebody close because when they're close, it's a deep wound. David said it like this, for it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have, you know, 
escape that. Plan for that. He said, neither was it he that hated me or did magnify himself against me. He said, then I could have hid myself from him. He said, but it was my brother that did it. The person I love. The person that we shared together. Ministered together. Loved together. That's the only person that could wound him like this and make him want to die. He said, I want to fly out of here. If I had wings, I would fly out of here. Well, but you King David, man. God has established his kingdom through you. But because his wound was so heavy, he's ready to go, not even thinking about all the people. And the whole Bible that was being left for us. He wasn't thinking about anything. It's just, I got to get out of here because of his wound. Amen. I know I'm preaching. Amen. Those that were closest to Jesus fell asleep in the garden when they were supposed to be watching and praying for him. Jesus came and like, what did y'all do last night? Why well, y'all can't stay up? Do you know it's about to go down? And I, 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 you know, I can't speak for Jesus. I don't do that kind of stuff. But I could only imagine what he was thinking like, can't y'all sleep another time? Because this is only going to happen once. And then if I was Jesus, I'd want to know, how can y'all sleep if you love me like you say? If you love me like you say, and the hour of temptation has come, how can you forsake me like this for sleep? But that's what your enemies do to you. They attack you, try to destroy you. And at night you up. And they slip. <laughs> Matthew 26 and 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter. He went to Peter. You know how, why he went to Peter? Because Peter the one doing all the joy. Oh, Jesus, no, not me. Uh, no, not me. That's them. Not me. Wake up, Peter. What could, what is what he said? What could you not watch with me one hour? Peter must have had that on his. You remember when you was young and you was gonna get a whooping, so you went in and, and went to sleep. <laughs> Y'all remember that? You just go get in the bed and go to sleep. I did that once. Once. But the scariest thing in the world is to wake up in the midst of a beat. Because first you think you're dreaming. You think it's a dream so you don't really feel it. You just kind of know something is different. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. And he said, that's a fact. He remember. You, 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 you know, you're like Absalom. You're like in between two rims. You're just teeter-totter. You don't know which. Is, is this a real belt? Or am I dreaming? It's a belt fairy visited me. I don't know what is going on. But it's like, whack, whack. And then you hear, boy, get your tail up. And then it's like, no, I think I'm asleep. Then you wake up, oh, no. Oh. Oh. And then you, I ain't got no clothes. You know, you, I got pajamas on. They can't absorb none of the shock. They can't absorb the pressure from the belt. If I had known, I would have put jeans and a denim jacket on. I'd have wore a football uniform. Something. But my daddy got me in here in my drawers. I feel like Kuta Kinte. <laughs> so I didn't try to sleep. I, I stopped after that. That was the last time. No, I'll just stay up. Because, you know, my dad, I mean, if you're under the covers, he's hitting whatever. He don't care where the end is what. <laughs> but yeah so Peter he must I don't know what, was the, what the problem was but they fell asleep on Jesus now Jesus walked them around taught them loved them even took Peter to see him be transfigured and glorified it's like man y'all was my people 
and you can't wait an hour for me. So, you know, we talk about what Jesus had to carry in, um, to the cross and how, you know, he was definitely concerned about all of us, but now he's got this issue with his close loved ones. So now he's dealing with that. He was a human. So he was dealing with the way these folks was acting. And then after that, they did not even knowing him. This had to be painful to the human side of God because he gave them so much of himself. He's going to the cross with this pain. The pain of what's going to happen. The pain of sin and now the pain of my friends rejecting me. Luke 22 and 60. And Peter said, man, I know not who thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew, just like Jesus said. Can I keep preaching? Yes, they look like they up to no good. The scribes, Pharisees, and religious leaders started rumors, seditions, variances, discord, and all kinds of accusations against Jesus so he could be killed. They just messed, tarnished his reputation so that he could be killed. Yet Jesus kept the main thing, the main thing, and continued the course set for him. Because he wasn't thinking about what they were doing. He was thinking about what he was going to do for all of us. Amen. He stayed the course. Matthew 12 and 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him. You know, I used to travel and do the truth on hip hop years ago. And they announced I was going to be in the city. They would call a council of pastors. And all the pastors would get together and ban their churches from coming out to hear me. This was back in the early 2000s. I went to one pastor, I'll never forget, in Youngstown, Ohio. I went to him, he took me in his office and put his head on his desk and started crying. And I said, what you crying for? He said, man, nobody's here. I said, why? He said, because our, our, our bishop told everybody, if you bring G. Craig, that you will be excommunicated out of the jurisdiction. Over some music. Because one of his godsons was in on one of my slides. Over some music, brother. Some music. Had another, I mean, this, this pastor had 10,000 members in Houston, Texas. Ooh, God won't let me tell you who he was. But he had 10,000, and he, maybe he's repented by now, so maybe that's why. 10,000 members. I was supposed to go to his church and, and do the truth behind hip hop. And toe nay who's be slayed now, called him and told him, G. Craig been talking about me, so you can't bring him. And do you know that pastor canceled the truth behind hip hop? So they meet up and it's the truth. And it's not just truth, it's life changing truth. Devil don't care about you telling the truth. But something that's going to change your whole generation, he's got to stop that. Because that interferes with what he wants to do. Yeah. But just like Jesus, I have to keep the main thing the main thing. And finish the course. Amen? Matthew 12 and 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him. How they might what? Destroy him. Destroy him. Not just kill him. Destroy him. Because the Bible said the thief cometh but to kill, steal, and what? Destroy. Can I keep preaching? Yeah, man. You got to keep looking at somebody and say, keep the main thing the main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. Even in the garden. He prayed for another way because of the pain he was about to endure for us. Jesus prayed, God, is there another way? 
that this can happen. He's dealing with the pain of his friends, the pain of sin, and then the pain of being destroyed on a cross, his body bruised and blundered. But then after that, he did something called kenosis. He emptied out himself. That's what kenosis is, the emptying out of yourself. And he said, nevertheless, not my will, but what? Thy will, Thy will be done. Luke 22 and 42 saying, Father, if thou, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Lord, if, you, if you're willing to, just cancel this whole thing. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He allowed the devil to hurt him so he could ultimately help us all. And this is the same posture we must have towards this life. You got to let somebody hurt you so you can help others. <laughs> hmm. 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 Yeah. I let them hurt you. Hmm. Can't say nothing, can't do nothing. I let them hurt you. Even when they tell you, I've had preachers tell me, I'm going to destroy you. Now you got to sit back, let them hurt you. So you can hurt, help someone else. When I was daily with you in the temple, Jesus said, ye stretch forth no hands against me. Y'all didn't do nothing. You know why y'all didn't do nothing? Because it wasn't time for you to do nothing. And I wasn't going to let you do nothing until it was time for you to do it. This is what Jesus is saying. This is a very loaded passage. He's really flexing hard. Hard. Like they come to arrest him and he's like, look. <laughs> why did y'all do this the other day? Y'all didn't see me hanging around the temple all this time. Yeah. Then nobody do nothing. He said, you didn't stretch forth no hands against me. He said, but now I'm going to give you this hour. I'll let you do it now. This is your hour now. And the power of darkness. So bring it on now. I'm going to let it happen. Hmm. Yeah, Jesus was in control of the opposition. the pain of our own cross to follow him. The pain of our own cross. Can't go to sleep. Can't deny him. You got to be willing to experience and suffer the pain of your own cross. Your own trauma, issues, hurt, all that has happened to you, you got to endure it. And the devil will keep messing with you and you got to just take it. Because it's a part of this. Suffering is a part of this. Hurt is a part of this. A part of this. Being broken down, humiliated is a part of this. Being talked about, slandered, it's a part of this. Being disqualified by people is a part of this. People hating you is a part of this. You got to be willing to experience it and all the pain of it to follow him. 2 Timothy 2 and 12, if we suffer, we shall also what? Reign with him. For if we deny him, he will also what? Deny us. So if you ain't willing to hurt, then you're not willing to follow.
Oh yeah, I get it. People ask me all the time, brother, how do you do it? I said, man, I'm, I'm following. I'm following. My life had to stop being my own to do this. Oh, but brother, you doing good. You got this. And oh, God, is that brother? <laughs> you see the glory. <laughs> brother, you don't know the story. <laughs> Folks, I just hurt you. And they hurt you because they're hurting. And you gotta be, that's what these messages are for. You gotta be able to see that that wasn't really directed at you, even though it was, but there's something else wrong and that person is hurting. That's a maturity level you gotta come to. Where you're willing to just squash beef and all of that. It ain't that important because, bruh, that's something, there's something else wrong there that you can't solve. You just got in the crosshairs. And so you gotta forgive them and move on. Amen. Well, I don't see how my wife does it sometimes. You know, I try my best to protect her. I try my best, you know, to cover her and stuff. But folks still hurt her. They still hurt her. I know, I'll tell you this. One time my wife went and bought these, these, this family stuff for their babies, bought them stuff. I mean, gave them all kinds of stuff. And then like a day later, that lady, that family hated us. Went from love to hate in a day. How does that happen? So I pray for my wife, but she, you know, she tough. But man, people doing that kind of stuff, why? But then you gotta look behind it. It wasn't really directed at us. They was already like that. They just needed somebody to stir it up. It was already in there, and here's the part that I hate, but it's true. God will allow somebody to stir it up because you don't want them folks on your team no way. If they're that easily manipulated, you don't want them in the heat of the battle. You want them to go before the battle really gets hot or they will get you killed. So God got to remove them. God got to take them out. And however he does it, do it, Lord. And if there's some left in here now, get them out of here. Because we're going into real spiritual warfare. Can I preach in here? Man, when I stood in front of that crowd on Friday, it just all registered to me. I see exactly what's going on. You know, people can get so mad at you to try to stop you that they're stopping the move of God that's happening through you. And they don't even see, huh, there's a move of God happening. People are being changed, delivered, and set free. And I'm standing in a way of it, trying to, there was a dude out in front of the church, in front of the building, turning people away. Telling them, y'all don't want to go in there, it's dangerous in there. People passing out, and it's hot, and they fainting, and you just don't want to come in here. Yeah, and they had to force their way in. Yeah. Do you mad at me so you're going to stop the people from receiving? <laughs> yeah. And the Bible said even the ones that killed Jesus, if they had known what they were standing in front of and messing up, they would have never done it. That's what the Bible said. Ain't that what the Bible said ever? <laughs> yeah, standing in front of the church, y'all don't go in there. Security, y'all didn't know, did you? That's, that's a good old tase right there, Jack. <laughs> I need to see phone. <laughs> Keep holding that button. <laughs> To the battery is dead. <laughs> hey man, we ain't trying to kill nobody. It'll be all right. <laughs> but yeah, you're going 
going to block people from coming and getting their children delivered. And it just reminded me, it took me way back when I was speaking at Hampton University. There was a sniper in the audience going to shoot me at Hampton University. They called and somebody tipped me off. Tell G. Craig, do not, and this, he was on our side, but do not take that platform because there's, there's a dude in the 5% nation going to shoot. As soon as they said 5% nation, I said, well, then the gun is borrowed. We know that much. We know that. And he don't have a job, so he's practiced all day. We know that much, too. Amen. There's things that we know. And I, I'll never forget, I, I remember what I had on. And I had to walk out on that stage and preach the truth behind hip-hop. And I went up there and I preached it. And as soon as I finished, everyone just ran out of the building. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, here it is. <laughs> Get your hand off my pocket. <laughs> Get your hand off my pocket. This is it. This is it. Oh, I thought it was it. Deke, I ain't playing. I thought it was it. Because everybody just took off. But what they were doing, they were running to their dorms, getting all of their stuff. And they all came back with bags of stuff. All of their fraternity, sorority stuff. All of their music. All of the demonic stuff they had. And they began to just empty it out on the altar. I was like, where the sniper? But at that, by then, I didn't care because I knew what it was. The devil didn't want that message preached because he knew them folks that threw that stuff out, they're going to stay that way. That fruit is going to remain. See, the fruit don't remain when you make a decision in the head but don't have no action behind it. See, when you just make a decision, yes, I serve the Lord, all right, but you ain't changing nothing. That's a whole different dynamic. But when the person actually decides, not only am I going to receive this, but I'm going to go make changes, that fruit remains. Jesus told his disciples that no man can come after him unless he denies himself takes up his cross and what? Follows him. What Jesus was really saying, this is what Jesus, this was Jesus telling them, really, if you really love me, come hurt with me. Are you willing to hurt with me? Does it have to be always good? And when it's bad, do you have to always react and fight and defend yourself and fall out and mess up and hate your brothers and sisters and just go against them? Is that the reaction that always has to happen? Or are you willing to hurt with him? He says, are you willing to hurt with me? You cannot preach my truth unless you hurt with me. You cannot stand up for righteousness until you hurt with me. You cannot walk in the newness of this life or be raised in eternal glory until you first hurt with me. We must partake. Are you willing to hurt with me? Romans 8 and 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It's not worth it. It's not worth you reacting. In your heart, you're walking around with something in your heart toward another human, and it's really the devil. The devil hurt you. The devil hurt you. The sufferings, you got to go through them and you got to hurt with him if you love him. That's the decision we make when we get married. This woman, when she married me, she agreed to hurt with me. 
and I agreed to hurt with her. And no matter what, we're going to stay together. We're going to hurt with each other when we need to. But the good part is we get to rejoice with each other as well. devil is a worthy opponent. <laughs> we got to get a devil his props right now. He's a worthy opponent. You know, when Ali was fighting Frazier, since I mentioned him early, they always say, every commentator said, Frazier brought out the best in Ali, and Ali brought out the best in Frazier. One would win sometime, the other would win the other, but they brought out the best in each other. They was crazy. But the way they went after each other, they made each other better fighters because that was a worthy opponent. Ali would just fight through just regular folk and Fraser would just knock out regular folk. They would just run through them. But when they got to each other, that worthy opponent, that makes you work out harder. Because now you're considering this is somebody that could really hit back. This ain't no fixed fight. I'm not fighting no undercard, dude. This dude can box. So I got to watch. I got to practice. I got to uh, work out. Now, what they say, how, what is it? A thousand hours for every minute you in the ring? A thousand hours. I think that's what it is. Maybe it's Corey here. Maybe he can correct me. I think it's a thousand hours for every minute you're in the ring. That's the workout you have to put in. Man, we got a punching bag in the gym the other day and we put the gloves on. Wasn't nobody even hitting back and I was losing. <laughs> the bag was winning. The bag beat me. I have a whole new respect for boxers. My goodness, I can't beat the bag. <laughs> he had to put a tire down around the, at the bottom to hold the bag because it was winning. Dude, stabilize that bag, it keep winning. Somebody get behind it and hold it. <laughs> yeah, but the devil is a worthy opponent. Only a good opponent can bring out the best in us. The only reason the devil is alive now is to bring out the best in you. <laughs> God allowed the devil to harm his son. Listen, because he knew that it would bring out the best in Christ which was the power in his blood. His mortal body had physical strength. He was a carpenter and a fisherman. So his natural mortal body had some physical strength and capabilities like all men. But what made him different from us was his blood carried no sin. His blood carried no sin. But to get the blood out of him, he needed a worthy Boy, I'll preach at him. He needed a worthy opponent. The scribes and Pharisees, they ain't worthy opponents. They were merely humans. The person messing with you, that ain't no worthy opponent. That's a dude that's mad at his own decisions. That's a woman that's jealous because she don't have what you have. That's some old jive sucker. Ain't got nothing and want to take away what you have because he don't have nothing. That ain't no worthy opponent. No, the scribes and Pharisees, they were just humans that the devil used to puncture Jesus so that his blood could be spilled. The devil thought if we spill his blood, he'll die. Because when you lose your blood, you bleed out, you die. However, <laughs> What the devil didn't know 
was that there was power in the blood. <laughs> Look at somebody said there's power in the blood of Jesus. Jesus' blood came out and saved us all. All power. Listen to this. Devil didn't know he was giving his power up. But all power, including the devil's power, was then given to Jesus. The devil was used by God to bring forth the very things that he didn't want to see. <laughs> he was used. He was used. And God is allowing folks to do stuff to you. To, he's using them to bring out the best in you for what he has for you to do. <laughs> mm. This is how we must treat our adversaries. Allow them to bring out the very thing they tried to stop. I'm going to let that marinate. Let them bring out the very thing that they tried to stop. <laughs> you know, because if God started it, man can't stop it. He said, he that has begun a good work will complete it. They can't stop it, man. Can't stop it. They oppose you because you live wiser and with victory that they don't have. You know folks are mad at your victory. They'll try to stop you just because you have victory. And they don't. When if they had any biblical spiritual sense, they'd understand that we all have victory. Because the fight is over. It's already over. We just have to keep reminding the devil that he's already lost. We operate in victory. Come on, sir. They oppose you because you live wiser and with victory that they don't have. Well, show them that you are wise in not opposing them. And you have victory even over their attacks. So when you don't oppose somebody, you have victory over their attacks. When they mess with Jesus, the Bible said he didn't say a word. You know why? Because he already had victory. Why would I say something to them when I'm using them to do this to save them? Look at somebody say, stop saying stuff. You ain't got to say stuff back every time. Oh, but this time, ooh, he said, stop saying stuff. Let folks oppose you and hurt with him. Hurt with Christ. Hurt. Because if you suffer with him, you'll reign with him. When the devil hurts you, rejoice. Look at somebody and say, rejoice. Rejoice. Because when you partake in Christ's sufferings, you will eventually partake in his glory. Amen? Amen. Look at somebody and say, rejoice. Matthew 5 and 10 says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs, we're going to heaven. If you hurt with him, you're going, you're going to heaven. If you're persecuted, if they just slandering and talking about you and reviling you and just hating on you, you're blessed. Amen. Because this is not heaven. Look at somebody and say, it gets much better than this. <laughs> so I'm willing to go through the foolishness right now so I can get to heaven anybody want to go to heaven ain't but two places to go amen you ain't hanging around here I think I'll hang around here right now then you're going to hell but blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake or for my sake 
Rejoice! Look at somebody say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great. See, this great isn't the same as our great. Our great is confined to our 3D understanding and perception. What we consider great is not even really great. We don't know great in our realm. We don't. We really don't. Because <laughs> all things are equal in our realm. Ain't nobody special in our realm. You know that? Well, LeBron James is special. Anybody that went through he, what he went through as a kid and practiced like he practiced will be just as good as him. Eat what he eat. Sleep how he sleep. You'll be just as good. Somebody else can do that. Yeah, anything. Anything. PJ is one of the best keyboard players in the whole world. Yeah. But all he got to do, I don't know which one of them it is. Little Judah, little Ty, one of them. Set him in front of the keyboard and teach him what he knows. And eventually they'll get better than him. Yeah. Yeah. So I tell these musicians here to have jobs. All our musicians got jobs. You know why? <laughs> Because when you get older, somebody going to cut your head. And you ain't going to be the best thing in town no more. Because anybody can do it. Yeah. Yeah. But rejoice and be exceedingly glad. So what we consider great is just not that great. But when this says great is your reward in heaven, it's a four-dimensional great. That includes Jesus and God and the Holy Ghost. So our greatness can't compare to this word great in the scripture. So he's saying rejoice when folks do you wrong here on earth. And be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. And for so they persecuted the prophets. They did the prophets before you just like this. And they're all rewarded. Remember when Jesus transfigured himself, some prophets showed up with him. Can you imagine? Can you? You're talking about great. Jesus went somewhere. Y'all watch this. And transfigured himself into the glorified son just to show them a little glimpse. Then he went and got his guys. He's like, come here, Moses. Y'all come here. That's why they wasn't worried about what happened on earth. Man, we going back to earth glorified. So look at somebody and say rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. Everyone stand to your feet. Great is your reward in heaven. My goodness. Whoa, this message blessed me. You know, sometimes you got to preach yourself out of stuff. You know, you just got to I did this message, I was on the plane, heading to Raleigh, Friday. And I wasn't gonna do no message that morning and the Lord spoke to me and he said, hurt with me. I said, God, man, folks just tripping on me. I don't know what I'm gonna encounter when I get off this plane and get to this place. I don't know. I don't know what these dudes, I don't know. Folks that I loved are so upset with me. I don't know what to do. God said, hurt with me. You gonna hurt with me? Hurt with me. And I said, Lord, you know I'll do whatever. He said, hurt with me. And he said, cause tonight you're gonna see why I had to get you in a certain place. Because what you're gonna encounter tonight, you had to be ready for. And it was to see the generational impact of what God's call for one man could do. Amen. Amen. And I don't walk around. Y'all know me better than that. I brag and tell you what I did and got. None of that. But I felt pretty good to see all the fruit that had remained bring new fruit. Uh, amen. And you can be mad at that if you want to. Nobody cares. But I thank God for his call. 
So it's worth it to me to hurt. Say what you want to. I'm going to be okay. You know why? <laughs> because I'm hurting with the Savior. And I can rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Because great is my reward. And I'm good with seeing the soul saved. That's good enough for me. But God says, no, it gets greater. There is a great reward. Great. 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 Somebody needs the state of kenosis. The emptying out of yourself. That's what the word means. Emptying out of yourself. So that you can properly hurt with him. Quit hurting for yourself. Quit hurting in your own head and your own feelings. Right. Your own life. Quit hurt with him. But you got to empty yourself out first to be filled with what it is he has for you. If that's you, I want you to just come up and I'm going to pray. Empty it out. Hurt with him. Hurt with him. Hurt with him. And I tell people all the time, you're going to hurt anyway. Whether you're with him or not with him, you're going to hurt because people hurt in this life. So I'd rather hurt repping God, standing for the Lord, following his plan, denying myself, taking up my cross. I'd rather hurt with his cross than hurt without him. Because my hurt will pay off. Come on, whoever it is, just... Hurt with him. Hurt. Hurt with him. I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, just line up right there for those over there. Just get in the aisle. Just get in the aisle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's going to hurt sometimes. And you're going to want to quit sometimes. If Jesus stood in the Garden of Gethsemane and said, can there be another way? We are much less than him. So we gonna hurt. If Elijah can, the greatest prophet in the Old Testament to me, can take off running to hide from Jezebel and have to be restored by God to even get back on track after doing a powerful work for God, man, we gonna get a little afraid sometimes too. We gonna hurt. We're going to doubt a little bit. We're going to not even see how we're going to get through it. It's going to hurt so bad. But don't focus on the wound. Don't focus on the pain. If you focus on the wound and focus on the pain, you'll start finding pain and other stuff where there is no pain. And you, Amen. And then you'll alienate, you from the, and alienate yourself from the people that God put in your life to help you. But hurt with him. It's okay. Everyone bow your heads. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to feel that way. When nobody's around. It's okay. It's okay to feel that pain, that pressure. It's okay. It's okay. God understands. He is not a high priest that cannot be touched the feelings of our infirmities but in all points was he tempted just like we are he hurt just like you hurt he hurt just like you hurt he cried just like you cry it's okay it's okay it's okay yeah they don't understand you you feel misunderstood it's okay nobody can relate it's okay you feel like the black sheep you feel like something is even wrong with you that makes you different from the others it's okay it's okay. It's okay. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. And all of us that have come, God, we sacrifice everything to hurt with you. We come to hurt with you, to partake in your sufferings, to go through it, to go through it. We're going to go through it, God, and make it out on the other side 
but we are giving ourselves to you to accept sufferings in this life. Nobody understands us, Lord. At times we feel nobody gets it. Times it hurts so bad we can't even cry. But Father God, we know that we must go through these things so we can be better. So Father God, we are willing to go through whatever it is, whatever assignment the enemy's on, Father God, that you're allowing, we will go through so we can reign with you. But God, we ask right now for strength. We ask for courage. We ask for consistency. Father God, help us make it through. Everyone lift your hands. Fill us with your Holy Ghost, Lord, to help us make it through. Help us, Father God, not see the person, not see the people, but see the enemy. Father God, help us to not blame people. Help us to not argue and threaten and fight. Help us, Father God, to love our brothers and sisters and understand that they are reacting to the pain in their own lives. But help us to mature in this area, God. Fill us with your Holy Ghost so that we will endure all temptations and we will endure all fights and we will fight with victory in the name of Jesus. I speak the victory of the Lord in your life right now. You are not fighting as a loser. You are fighting a fixed fight that has already been taken care of. You just have to remind the enemy that the fight is over. You've already won. Take the victory of the Lord in the name of Jesus. God has sealed the deal. He's already completed the work. We just have to get to the end of it. In the name of Jesus. But victory is ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hug somebody and say, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Come on, PJ. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. I told Satan. Victory today is mine.